Uh oh, you better grab hold of your graphics card. Yeah, like this, because it looks like some RTX 40 GPUs could be getting canceled. Could yours be next? Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. So good and tasty. This video is not sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Anyway, let's get into the tech news. That's right, we got a lot to go over today. And starting off with our first topic, it looks like the RX 6000 series of GPUs finally got a driver update. And oh boy, was it a big one. So if you have an RX 6000 series card or you're thinking of purchasing one, yes, it looks like there was a huge performance uplift with this latest driver. Now, this information comes from the website Hardware Times, which I will have linked in the description below. But if we take a look at their article, we can see here they state, quote, AMD's latest adrenaline driver update promises ample performance improvements across various titles. On average, we're talking about an FPS gain of up to 27% in ray trace games, including Formula One 2022, Cyberpunk 2077, Hitman 3, Guardians of the Galaxy, and more compared to their October release. And you can see here right on the screen, yeah, that's an insane improvement in FPS in some of those ray traced games and great to see that AMD is still not ignoring their previous generation of products and only making the value even better. And speaking of even better, if we take a look at the largest improvement yet, we can see here in the DirectX ray tracing feature test, which they did do over at Hardware Times, they actually got an insane 40% uplift with the newest graphics driver, jumping from 24.24 on the previous one, all the way up to 33.45 FPS. That's right, it's almost playable, not, but in any case, yes, that is a very large improvement and great to see that the RX 6000 series is still very alive and kicking. But that's not all. Let's go ahead and move on to the next story where it looks like Intel's ARC A770 is whooping some serious butt. That's right. If we take a look at some numbers posted by Tech Power Up, the ARC A770 GPU from Intel is actually taking AMD out to lunch in 4K ray tracing performance. Now, I do believe this is probably a case of poor optimization, but we're talking about a card that's supposed to be around $330 to $350 dollars versus a card that's supposed to be well over a thousand dollars oftentimes especially if you're looking at aib models so if it's able to beat amd at anything coming in at around a third the price well that is very very impressive stuff and not only does it beat it it absolutely wipes it across the floor so honestly yes while this probably is a case of a little bit of poor optimization i also do believe that intel's arc gpus do have very impressive ray tracing performance overall because it's also beat out the RTX 3080, which is only getting 15 frames per second. If we take a look at this chart, you can see that the RTX 4090 is getting a little bit over double the performance of the ARC A770, so they do have a ways to go. However, if they simply move over from a 256 to a 384 bit bus, they move to maybe GDDR7 or GDDR6X Plus or whatever it ends up getting named, and they get a huge bandwidth improvement from that. And then let's say that they move to a smaller node and they double their core count. Well, we could actually actually be talking about a GPU that does have roughly double the performance of the ARC A770 and in ray tracing 4K performance that would put it roughly on par with the RTX 4090. My only concern will be is it going to be too late? Now if they can get it out by early next year then I think it still will be a great car but I am a little bit worried that we could be talking about mid to late next year and if that turns out to be the case and I think it's going to be a little bit too late once again and it's going to force them to bring their prices a lot lower than they were expecting 
expecting and we do really need Intel Arc to succeed because AMD and Nvidia at this point just simply aren't competing with each other and they're raising prices higher and higher and higher. So I do really think we need Intel to come out with Battle Mage as soon as possible and get in there with some very aggressive pricing, much like they did with their first generation of GPUs because these GPUs do have a lot of exciting tech in them. So yeah, hopefully the Battle Mage series comes out sooner rather than later and we can see even more competition from Intel breaking up this ridiculous what seems to be a duopoly. But now it's time to talk about the RTX 40 series because that's right, it looks like some GPUs could be getting canceled. Now the GPUs in question would all be revolving around variants of the biggest RTX 40 series card ever created. Now, I also will mention that the RTX 40 Super Series might not be happening as well. I'll talk about that more in depth in another video. However, rumor has it that the RX 7000 Series refresh was likely canceled as well, meaning that the RTX 40 Super Series likely won't be happening as well. So that could rule out a whole bunch of other RTX 40 Series cards as well. But again, we'll talk about that more in depth in a future video and whether or not it is really going to happen. But let's talk a little bit more about the Titan right now, because honestly, the fact that this might be canceled makes a lot of sense to me. It was just a slightly more beefed up version of the RTX 4090 Ti and frankly guys an extra 2% of shaders isn't really gonna make a difference and honestly the whole 800 watts thing that was going around that's ridiculous it was never gonna happen when we're talking about total board power much like I'll be showing you some of the specs for this in just a second here total board power is just simply saying how much maximum power can you put through the PCB and between the 800 watts plus the weird vertical layout of the whole display port array none of it really made any sense for consumers and I honestly think it's probably a good thing that it was canceled and is going to be replaced by the RTX 4090 Ti now the 4090 according to the latest leaks from Cop 87 Kimi is apparently going to be based off the 8102-400-A1 die. It'll have 18,176 FP32 cores down from the 18,432 that were going to be present on the Titan. It's going to have 96 megabytes of L2 cache up from the 72 that you see on the RTX 4090. And it'll also have 24 gigabytes of 24 gigabits per second GDDR6X, which is up from the 21 gigabits per second on the RTX 4090. And it's also going to be half the amount that you were going to be seeing on the RTX Ada Titan. Now, total board power is 600 watts, but once again, this does not mean it's going to be drawing 600 watts. I've heard that it's probably going to be somewhere between 450 to 500 watts, likely 475 watt TDP. However, if you want to unlock your power limit, 600 watts, once again, just like the RTX 4090, is very likely. So there you have it. If you were hoping to get the full die this generation, it looks like that's not going to be happening and it has been canceled and replaced by a slightly cut down RTX 4090 Ti. Now, I think that's a little bit of a shame. You know, it just feels bad to be spending that much money, likely $2,000 on the 4090 Ti to only be getting like 98% of the GPU and half the VRAM. However, the RTX Titan probably would have been like $3,000. So yeah, either way you look at it, these GPUs are getting ridiculously expensive. And it's just yet another reason as to why we need Intel to succeed with their next generation and current generation of ARC GPUs. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.